Hello everyone and Assalamu alaikum. This is Introduction to Psychology Part 1 PSY 312 by Dear Knowledge. Okay, in our previous video we discussed uh, the nature and properties of light, which was the part 1 of lesson 3 of chapter 4. So if you haven't watched that video, I have given a link in description box. Or if I haven't, in case if I forgot, do remind me in the comment section. If you need that video, I'll provide the link of that video. So in part one of the lesson three of chapter four, we discussed about the nature of sound and the properties of sound. And this is the part two of lesson three of chapter four, which is sensation. And part two is about audition. And in this video, we will discuss about the structure and function of the ear. So this video contains the ear. Uh, we will discuss how does it work and we will discuss about different parts of the ear. The outer ear, the middle ear and uh, the inner ear. So um, let's start with today's video. The ear. How does it work? So um, the human ear is made up of uh, the outer ear, the middle ear and the inner ear. Now, in general, uh, sound waves are collected in the outer ear, uh, amplified in the middle ear, and transduced or transformed into neural messages in the inner ear. Now, in this video, we will uh, discuss and we will trace the path taken by the sound waves through the ear. So, let's start with the outer ear. Now, I have included a very short definition of the outer ear. Uh, the definition is that the part of the ear that collects sound waves consists of the pinna, the ear canal, and the eardrum. Now, you might be a little bit confused about the eardrum as uh, in most books, the eardrum is a part of the middle ear. And uh, one book of uh, Huckleberry and Huckleberry, Psychology by Huckleberry and Huckleberry, um, second edition, uh, in that book, eardrum is part of the outer ear. Now, in other books, you might see that eardrum is part of the inner ear. Now, it's a bit confusing. The reason behind this is that eardrum is on the boundary or it lies or it, look, it is located on the boundary of the outer ear and the middle ear. Now, it is also part of the outer ear as well as the middle ear. But if you want to be more specific, then the eardrum is part of the middle ear. But in this video, we'll start uh, or how the sound is transferred through these paths. So we'll discuss the outer ear first. So um, the outer ear includes the pinna, the ear canal, and the eardrum. The pinna is oddly shaped flap of skin and cartilage that's attached to each side of your head. And um, the pinna helps us to pinpoint the location of a sound. But um, the pinna's primary role is to catch sound waves and funnel them into the ear canal. Now, the sound uh, waves travel down the ear canal, then bounces uh, into the eardrum, which is a tightly stretched membrane. And when sound waves hit the eardrum, it vibrates, uh, matching the vibration of the sound waves um, in both intensity and frequency. Now, uh, the next one is about middle ear. I have included the definition of the middle ear, the part of the ear that amplifies sound waves and consists of three small wounds, uh, the hammer, the annual, and the stirrup. Now, um, as uh, the eardrum separates the outer ear from the middle ear. As the eardrum vibrates, the vibration is transferred to the middle ear, which consists of three bones, the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup, which is also known as malice, uh, incus, and steps. Now, and they are named after the objects they resemble. Each bone sets the next bone in motion. Now, uh, the joint action of these three bones almost doubles the amplification of the sound. The innermost bone, the stirrup, transmits the amplified vibration to the oval window. Now, um, if the tiny bones of the middle ear are damaged or um, 
brittle as they sometimes do in the old age, uh, conduction deafness may result. Conduction deafness can be helped by a hearing aid which amplifies sounds. Uh, the next one is the inner ear. Now I've included a very short definition of the inner ear. Um, the inner ear is the part of the ear where sound is transduced into neural impulses and it consists of the cochlea and semicircular canals. Now, um, this definition is taken from the psychology book of Falkenbury and Falkenbury, second edition. Uh, like the eardrum, the oval window is a membrane, but it is many times smaller than the eardrum. Now, the oval window separates the middle ear from the inner ear. Now, as the oval window vibrates, the vibration is next relayed to an inner structure called the cochlea. Now, a fluid-filled tube that's coiled in a spiral mm, uh, is... Um, is a cochlea. Now the word cochlea comes from uh, the Greek word for a snail and the spiral shape of the cochlea does resemble a snail shape uh, or a snail's shell. Now although the cochlea is a very complex structure it is quite tiny no larger than a pea size. Now as the fluid in the cochlea uh, repels, uh, um, repels, the vibration in turn is transmitted to the uh, basilar membrane which runs the length of the uh, coiled cochlea. Now what actually basilar membrane is? I've included two definitions of the basilar membrane. The first one is membrane within the cochlea of the ear that contains the hair cells and the second definition is one of the membranes that separate the two tubes of the cochlea and on which the organ of corti rests. Now these are the two definitions taken from two separate uh, books. So uh, these were the two definitions of basilar membrane. Now um, embedded in the basilar membrane are the sensory receptors found for sound called hair cells uh, which have tiny projecting fibers that look like hairs. Now I've included a very short definition of hair cells. Um, the definition is the hair-like sensory receptors for sound found in the basal um, membrane of the cochlea is hair cells. As I've uh, said that uh, it's um, uh, hair-like structure, it, it have tiny projecting fibers that look like hair. Now, damage to the hair cells or auditory nerves can result in nerve deafness, which cannot be helped by a hearing aid, and exposure to a uh, loud noise can cause nerve deafness. Now, the hair cells um, bend uh, as the basilar membrane ripples and it is here the transduction finally takes place and the physical vibration of the sound waves is converted uh, into neural impulse. Um, as the hair cells bend, they stimulate the cells of the auditory nerve which carries the neural information to the thalamus and um, the auditory cortex in the brain. Now this is how a sensory information is transferred from, or is converted into neural impulse and it is taken to the brain. Now let's summarize uh, all the lecture which we have uh, discussed and uh, let's discuss it and um, make it more clear. Now what actually happens is that sound waves are sensed and perceived by the auditory system which becomes at the ear. And the ear is divided into outer, middle, and inner ear. Now, sound is conducted differently in each section. The outer ear consists of pinna and the external auditory canal, and pinna is oddly shaped flap of skin and cartilage that is visible on the outside, which is commonly called the ear. Now, it is a sound collecting cone, and this shape helps us to localize sound by making uh, the different, uh, making the sound different uh, in front of us and behind us. The two ears uh, 
working together can detect direction of uh, sound. Many animals can move their pinnas and their heads in order to detect sound direction, but a uh, human can only move their heads. Now, um, because the sound reaches, uh, the sound most uh, difficult uh, to detect are those that come from directly in front or behind us, because the sound reaches your ears at the same time. Now, um, when we have trouble um, in uh, detecting sound direction, we move our heads and this movement helps us to move our cars uh, relative to the sound we are trying to detect, making it easier to determine where it is coming from and, uh, coming from, and the sound waves um, that are uh, funneled through the pin nap pass uh, through the external canal to the middle ear. Now the middle ear has four main parts, the eardrum or the tympanic membrane as I've discussed earlier. The other eardrum in some books are considered as a part of the outer ear and in some books is considered a part of the middle ear. But if you want to be more specific, then consider eardrum as to be a uh, part of the middle ear. Now, the middle ear has four main parts, the eardrum or the, um, uh, you can call it eardrum or you can also call it time panic. Uh, membrane and the three small bones or ossicles. Now the eardrum is a tightly stretched membrane that vibrates in response to sound. Um, the eardrum separates the outer ear from the middle ear and the three ossicles are the three bones connected to one another by ligaments. The Latin names of the bones uh, correspond to their shapes. Um, the malleus, which is a hammer, the incus, which is the anvil, and the stapes, which is the stirrup. Now, the eardrum transmits sound waves to the ossicles, which act like a liver to uh, amplify the sound waves before they reach the inner ear. Now, the inner ear consists of the cochlea, oval window, and the basilar membrane. The oval window separates the inner ear from the middle ear and um, the vibration from the tapes are conveyed to the oval window. Now, The oval window is a membrane in the wall of a spiral structure called the cochlea. The cochlea is a fluid filled um, bony snail shell shaped structure called the cochlea. The cochlea contains the receptors for hearing and it is a complex structure uh, it is no long larger than a pea size. The vibration of the oval windows and waves through the cochlea, and these waves are in turn set in. Uh, these waves are uh, these waves in turn set in motion. The basilar membrane. Now, the basilar membrane membrane is a flexible membrane that runs throughout the cochlear shell. It holds the auditory receptors called the hair cells, and the movement of the basilar membrane causes a uh, bending of hair cells that produce um, prostrate from it. And like the rows and cones in the eye, um, the hair cells transduce the physical stimulation into neural impulses that are then sent to the brain. Now, different sound frequencies trigger uh, different movement patterns in the basilar membrane. Now, there is less information about the auditory pathway as compared to the visual pathways. The neural impulses generated by the hair cell leave the cochlea in each ear along the auditory nerve and neural coding of the sounds that have been received in the right ear travel mainly along pathways um, leading to the left hemisphere of the brain and the left ear sounds go primarily to the right hemisphere. Now, this is how um, the sensation of the ear or the auditory system works and this is how the uh, sensory information or uh, hearing sensory information is transduced or um, into neural impulse and how it is reached to the brain and how you're able to uh, get the sensation 
and uh, get the sound sensation from the external environment and how it reaches to your brain and then how perception is formed which will be the next video um, the chapter 5 about perception so this was the end of the video if your concept is clear you can like the video if not you can ask us in the comment section plus if you're new to this channel you can subscribe to your knowledge you can subscribe to our channel click on the bell icon so you will never ever miss any notification plus if you're new to this channel you can um, subscribe and share the link of this video and channel with your family members and friends because sharing is caring until then Allah Hafiz